Welcome to the Holiday Podcast, where we sit over some fresh baked challah on Friday afternoons here at my dining room table. I'm your host, Tammy Priest, a Jewish follower of Jesus. And it's great to be with you this week as we take another look at this intersection between the old and the new. Now, I have to tell you that it really is a happy day for me to be sitting here with fresh baked challah because it's the first batch I've been able to stand up and make in eight weeks um, since my foot surgery seven weeks ago today. So I may just decide to eat the whole thing for dinner tonight by myself. Um, it definitely has felt good to feel some progress in my recovery. But for most of us, this week has really held a lot of intensity, a lot of anxiety and relief and hope and grief and all sorts of emotions in between um, all around the nation for so many reasons. And in the middle of it all, I read something that I thought was pretty profound and it really spoke to my head and to my heart. Um, Rabbi Zvi Freeman wrote, in those places most finite where the light of day barely trickles in, there the infinite light most yearns to be found. Um, I'll say that again. In those places, most finite, where the light of day barely trickles in, there the infinite light most yearns to be found. This last year has revealed lots of pockets of darkness within us, um, collectively and individually. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because we know that when anything is brought into the light, um, healing can begin. And if I'm honest, uh, which I always try to be, one of the reasons that that quote spoke to me so personally is that I've really been reckoning with the places of darkness in my own heart, hurts and frustrations that I really haven't known what to do with. And so I've just let the shadows grow longer. And so Rabbi Freeman's quote um, really spoke to me, um, the yearning in my heart, the shadows in my heart and spirit these days. And so I decided to start praying with that visual, um, the infinite light illuminating the dark spaces um, for all of us, praying that we would collectively um, allow God's light to permeate dark hidden places in our culture um, and praying that I would allow that infinite light to permeate closed off spaces in myself, um, places of hurt and anger and defensiveness, um, even spiritual blind spots, because that is where the infinite light most yearns to be found. And as I started praying with that visual in mind, uh, that yearning for infinite light, an image came to my mind an image of an ancient light, the lampstand in the holy place of the desert tabernacle and later the Jerusalem temple. So in past episodes, we've talked about the altar of incense and the table of the showbread that sat outside the veil to the Holy of Holies, but we've never really talked about the golden lampstand except in the context of Hanukkah. So uh, this is what it looked like. And this is a full-size model that is in Jerusalem today, and it's based on God's design that he gave to Moses in Exodus 25. And you can't tell uh, from this photo, but the lampstand was huge, not a tabletop candle holder. Um, based on the biblical measurements, uh, this piece of gold was between 75 and 100 pounds, and it was about five feet three inches tall, which is a little bit taller than me and it sat right outside the veil that contained God's presence, his Shekinah glory, in the Holy of Holies. Now, there's so much that I love to talk about when it comes to this lampstand. Um, so much messianic foreshadowing and fulfillment. Um, but today, I wanna to just share about how and why Rabbi Freeman's quote about the infinite light yearning to illuminate our finite dark places made me think of the ancient lampstand. So, this ancient lampstand was the only source of light in the holy place, which is a really big deal because it was really dark inside. We can't even imagine. 
So when you read about the ancient sanctuary, you learn that not only was the tabernacle built with walls made of thick woven tapestries, but the entire massive structure was covered with three layers, um, a layer of tapestry, and then two layers made from animal skins, um, one out of goat skins, and another made of waterproof skins from something like a dolphin. Um, they're not sure exactly what the animal was, but it was some kind of waterproof skin to protect it from the elements, um, which means there was no way that anything, including light, was going to get through. So it was really dark inside. But the flames of this massive lampstand with its bowls of oil and wicks made of fabric um, lit up all the corners of that holy place just outside the veil. Um, all of the wrinkles and shadows and covered places. Um, now in terms of what it looked like, you may have noticed from the picture that the lampstand was fashioned like a tree with seven branches um, and cups, bowls really, um, shaped like almond blossoms. So seven torches basically. And throughout scripture, seven is a symbol of fullness and completion, beginning with the fullness and completion of creation. And its design as a tree was symbolic of the tree of life, also back in Genesis with creation. Um, and one of God's requirements about the lampstand was that the priests were to make sure that the lights never went out. This lampstand never stopped burning. And so with its perpetually burning torches and its tree of life shape, this lampstand was meant to be a picture of God himself, the giver of all life and the source of the infinite light by his own design. And actually the Talmud, which is the ancient Jewish Bible commentary, uh, states very clearly and simply that God is light. So 1500 years after God gave the instructions for this lampstand that represented him, um, the light and life that only he brings. Um, when Jesus said that he was the light of the world, he wasn't just being poetic. He was saying to people in very biblical Jewish terms that he was God, the one source of infinite, eternal light and life, which also meant that this golden lampstand in the holy place, the one that represented God, the one that stood there just on the other side of the veil from the Shekinah glory was a picture of Jesus that had been there all this time. Um, the light of the world. And he said that people who follow him will have the light of life, which is exactly what that ancient lampstand represented, the light of life. And just like God had told Moses to make the lamps, um, that this whole lampstand, by hammering, by beating this piece of pure gold from its base up to its blossoms. Jesus, this living lampstand, was beaten and hammered from his feet up to his brow so that he could become the source of eternal, infinite light for every person, ever born, everywhere. Which brings me back to our quote. In those places most finite, where the light of day barely trickles in, there the infinite light most yearns to be found. And so I pray that today, on this Sabbath Eve, that you and I would picture and meditate on this visual of the ancient lampstand, that symbol of God, the picture of the Messiah, with its flames lighting up the dark, hidden folds and corners of the holy place. And that we, now as temples of his Holy Spirit, would welcome him and his infinite healing light into those dark, hidden folds and corners of our own lives and let him reveal what needs to be revealed and to heal what needs to be healed in us. So Shabbat Shalom, I wish you peace and light in him to you today. Mm -hmm.